What is going on, you sexy mofos? So this is gonna be a brand new thing we're doing because now we have the website, we have an actual community that we put together somewhere and we can talk, we've met, we know what you like, you know what I like, so now we can have a real conversation. This is just gonna be a test pilot of what I wanna do, but this is gonna be basically last week in the community. And, and, and I wanna talk about a few things that really caught my eye, a few posts that you guys made. I wanna talk about my, I wanna give you guys my opinion directly rather than just writing it and uh, start this conversation and make it bigger and greater because fuck it guys, this is the whole point of this so that we can connect in a much better, easier way. So here we go. So the first post that caught my eye this week was Mr. JDD's post about car collaborations. Actually on Car Collabs, it was Jay Scott who posted it. Mr. JDD was just the dude who made the comment about the Range Rover. So I am sorry, Jay Scott, I apologize for that one. So what he's saying is, what cars would you like to see, what car makers would you like to see collaborate with each other in order to make a better product? And he gave, actually, I didn't realize where he was going with his, because I think that's a very interesting subject. Not a lot of people know, but a lot of car makers are getting more and more friendly every single time with each other and just licensing hardware, software from each other rather than just developing it because it's just cheaper. Technology is moving so fast, you cannot spend all of your money just developing this one button when you can just be doing what you're the best at and get the button from the best button maker out there, right? But Mr. JDD was talking about something completely different. He was saying, hey, how about I can get a Land Rover or a Range Rover with the reliability of a Corolla. So <laughs> Range Ro uh, Land Rover and Toyota working together in order to make a reliable Range Rover. That's fucking hysterical, that'd be great. And I think that's great, I think that's smart, but I don't think it'd be that easy. I actually don't think that they can just do, hey, let me have the body of your car and let's put all the insights of a Toyota and it's gonna work perfectly. But what I'm seeing more and more and more is this big company's Remac working with Aston Martin, for example, Aston Martin working with AMG, all of those I'm a big, big fan of. And the one that I'd love to see the most would actually be Rolls-Royce and Remac working together because I do really feel, and I already made a video about this, that if you made a Rolls-Royce all electric, it would be the most delicious car ride and experience of all time. That is my take. Which one's yours? Thank you, Mr. JDD, for the post. Another great topic that I actually posted today and blew the fuck up is on the verge of depreciation. Alvis One actually just posted the picture of a Cayman GT4 and the world went fucking mental. Uh, is the GT4 going to depreciate now that there's going to be a brand new GT4 coming out? That's the rumor, right? That the GT4 RS is coming out. No. The GT4 RS is going to be a, a, a PDK. All RS cars, if you look at the trend, are PDK. The GT cars are manuals. And the reason why I don't think the, uh, the GT4 is on the verge of depreciation is because it's literally a Cayman, the last Cayman with a flat six, but from a 911. This is the first time and the only time that it was done. Plus it's a manual, plus it drives like a mother. It's, it's a real driver's car. That car in my book, it's actually in its way up. So if you, if you're planning on getting one, make sure you get the bucket seats. That's the must. If you get the bucket seats, you're good to go. The value's gonna go up like crazy in those cars. There was a lot of interesting comments there about what's gonna be on the verge of depreciation. I think the Aventador S is gonna take it for me. I think that Performante is actually gonna take a humongous shit on the Aventador S sales because who would want the Aventador S when you can get a Performante instead? And for cheaper, I buy the Performante instead. And I do get the appeal of the Aventador S, but that's $100,000 over what it was back in the day. When I first got my first Aventador, I paid 380, 390 for it, the orange one. They're $505,000 now, that's fucking crazy. So to me on the verge of depreciation, the Aventador S that literally just came out, I'm, I'm sorry Lamborghini, you're doing great, but you need to fucking get your shit together when it comes to releasing your cars. You need to find them an owner before you ship them out, not just to showrooms. So that's my, 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 my advice to you, Lamborghini, that it's not watching. So Jay Scott posted their review of the Performante by Henry Catchpole, who uh, used to work at Evo, now works at Drive Drive. That was sick. I'm not even gonna spoil it for you guys. You guys are gonna watch it and hopefully you watch it on the website. If not, there's a link here in the description down below, I'm sure, because I'm the one making the post. So uh, uh, make sure to watch it. That was a great share. That was a great share. 
I madly love and support Lamborghini getting into this competition. Like finally, 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 we have so many options. Like it's really hard to decide. Do you want a GT2 RS? Do you want a Performante? Do you want a 720S? Do you want an LT? Like what do you want? Not a Ferrari, of course. <laughs> Sorry, my Ferrari dudes. I, I'm sorry. They're just not doing anything groundbreaking. I'm sorry, but everyone else is killing it. Killing it. Alexander Koskelka. I think that's how you pronounce your name. I'm sorry if I butchered it. You made a post about the M3, the E92 M3. I'm sorry. That is the last one that they made with a V8 and a manual gearbox. And there's a few in the US with that. And he's asking, do you think that's going to be a gold mine? Do you think that's going to be the car to appreciate and destroy? I personally don't think so. Even though on paper it has all of the elements to become a classic, I think the whole thing put together was shit. I th wasn't that one of the M3s that just got the worst reviews out of every single other M3 ever made, said that the suspension was too like wobbly, wasn't it? To me, the real winner is the E46, the M3 E46. Not only because I had one, I think that is the last great M3 that they ever built. I'm not saying the new ones are not great, but I think that like, those, those are just classics in my book. So what do you guys think? What M3 and M5 do you think are gonna be legendary and why? Obviously, it's gotta have a manual, so don't even fucking throw any SMG bullshit in there. <laughs> and the last thing I wanna talk to you guys about is the podcast. So if you guys have any podcast ideas, uh, our boy Adam already made uh, a thread about it. We put it in the, lab po in the last podcast. I'd love to hear them. So just make any post here on the website. Feel free to share a blog. Feel free to share an image. Uh, forum post, whatever it is, I'm reading them all and I'm going through them so we can get more ideas and more content for all of you guys. So this cycle is only going to get better and better. Anyways, I want to thank the three top dudes in the community this week. Mr. JDD, you're a fucking relentless dude destroying everyone. I know that you know how to cheat the penis point system. I know it. I know how you're doing it. I applaud you, dude, but I'm closing that <laughs> for you. I'm sorry. You got number one, Mr. Launchbox. You got number three. And Adam... Adam, my dude that we met in uh, in the UK, you're number two. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for bringing more content to the table. And thank you for being fucking awesome, guys. Hope to see you soon. What the fuck am I saying? I'll see you next week, motherfuckers. Peace.